Hey everybody and welcome to this video. So in this one, I'm gonna talk about horizontal sharding and how you can do this by actually distributing the load across nodes in uh, your Vitesse cluster using EC2 instances. So if you take a look here over in the AWS dashboard, I now have a whole bunch of instances here. So I've created some additional ones. I've still got that Ben Vitesse main. I've still got those three tablets, but I've also got a fourth tablet because in total I want to have four tablets and then I also have four VT gates. So this one's going to get even more complicated because I'm going to have nine terminal windows open having to do different things. And so this is going to be a good example of how you can do this on your own if you want to set up your own Vitesse cluster, but also starts to really show the value of a managed service like PlanetScale. And also in the next video, I'm gonna show you a little bit of how you can use Vitesse with Kubernetes and the planet scale operator for Vitesse, but that'll be for the next video. So let's jump over to the terminal sessions. I'll show you some of the stuff that I had to change to get this working and then can go through the steps to actually see it working in action. All right, so I'm over here and I've got a bunch of terminal windows open, right? So I've got these four up at the top here are for the VT gates. These down here are gonna be for the VT tablets, and this is still going to just be for my main uh, server setup that's gonna have the ETCD and a couple of other components running. Now, I've already done a bunch of stuff to prepare for this. It would be very boring if you actually sat and watched me do every step that was necessary to get this set up, but let me give you a quick overview. So, over here on this server, I made a couple of changes and I'll walk you through kind of in order how we're gonna execute. So I'm gonna go open up, I have a 101 before and after script, but different than the one from the previous video because what I have over here is everything from the 101 script up until the point where it would have created that one VT gate. And what I wanna do instead at that point in time is go over to my other terminals and start up for other VT gates on other EC2 instances. And then I have a 101 after script and this just does what comes after the VT gates, which in the case of the 101 example was just getting the VT admin window up and running and showing, right? Okay, so that's what I have over there. And then let me show you just on one of these servers, a couple of the changes that I had to make. So in addition to just getting the tests downloaded and installed on each of these nodes, I had to do a few other changes. So one was going back to common env. I had to change the host name so that it pointed at the private IP address of the server that's actually gonna be our main server, right? Running ETCD and so on. And I had to make a couple of other changes in here like updating from using local host to host name and so on. So I had to do that. And then I also made a small change in the script for getting a VT gate up. And really it was just, I believe it's down here set number in the 40s. Yeah, so I just added a host name equals host name dash F. And again, I did this on each of these servers here. So I did that. In addition, I should also point out another very important change that I made over here on the main server, which is in common VT admin, and then there's this file called discovery.json. And in the process of how these scripts work, it uses discovery.json as its place to figure out where am I looking for VT gates. Okay, so future Ben here, I wanted to point out a little mistake in that video. So you may have noticed if you were looking very closely that I formatted that JSON file a little bit wrong. The way that you actually wanna format it is like you see here, where each of those hosts is within its own JSON object within that array. And in that case, it would work and VT admin would probably display it. Anyways, a little bit of an aside there. If you're actually following along, do it this way, not the way that I show in the video. Okay, back to the video. And so this used to only have one entry down here in the VT gate section with localhost. But what I've done is I've grabbed the private IPs for each of the four servers that I have running over here and place them in here. That way it knows that it can discover VT gates at those IP addresses. So a number of steps that I had to do to kind of customize these scripts to get them ready to work and to do what I want them to do here. Okay, so now that I've shown you the different steps that needed to take place, let's go ahead and start up the cluster. So the steps that I'm gonna take is do 101 before and execute this, let it start up ETCD and a couple of those other components that need to happen before the VT gates. 
And then over here on each one of these, once it's ready, I'll hold off for a second, I will execute this. Why was it not searching through my history? So I want to execute uh, the VTGate upscript and I want to specify just what cell each one belongs to. So in this case, I want them all to belong to zone one. So I'll get that prepared in each of these terminals here. And once this finishes, I'll be able to start those up just so that all the sequencing happens correctly. All right, so this successfully pulled up VTORC and it got those tablets set up and so on. So now I'm gonna start up the four VT gates. So run that, run that, run that, and run that. So that all happened pretty quickly. VT gates can get up and running pretty fast. Um, so now next up is to do my 101 after, and this should get the admin panel built. Once this is built, we can go over back to the web UI and make sure everything looks good. And then from there, we can move on to the next step, which is sharding all of this stuff out onto multiple shards. Okay, so I'm over here in the UI panel and I've got my three tablets up. I've got my three schemas. One thing you might notice is it says there's only one gate. For some reason, the admin panel right now is only showing me the last gate from that file where I told it to find all of the gates. But don't worry, once we get to actually testing this out, you'll see that we can make connections from all four of the gates. For some reason, that's just not displaying the right thing right now. But anyway, so I've got those, and now the next step is to talk about how we're gonna do sharding. For the sharding steps, I've already taken care of a lot of the logistics for this, but let me just show you a few things that I did. So one is actually over in the 201 script. When you go to set up this new key space for uh, the, what's it called? Customer key space for the durability policy. Let me resize this a little bit. This used to be a different durability policy and I actually changed it to none. And mainly the reason for this is because I wanna do four shards and I don't wanna to have to have these be replicated at all for this example. So because there's no replication going on, I'm just gonna have no durability policy set. So that's a pretty simple one there. And then I just actually wanna run all of the two scripts. So 201 through 205, we'll let these execute. And then after that, I'll also have to show you a few adjustments and changes that I had to make to the 30. Uh, what is it, the 301 script to tell it how I want to shard because I'm going to shard a little bit differently in this example. All right, that one's done. 202. So that starts the move tables. 203 is really fast. 204 is really fast. That's for just switching traffic. And then 205 is cleaning up. Okay, so we're getting close to the sharding part. Now I'm going to open up 301 or actually maybe it's 303. It's the 303 script that I want to show you. So the change that I made here is, in this example, I'm actually gonna be splitting up the customer and the C order data across four shards rather than two. So previously, this section right here had only had two entries in it, dash 80 and 80 dash. And these were the ranges for those two shards. What I've done here is I've changed it to have four different ranges. So I've basically evenly divided up the range between 0, 0 and FF uh, for four shards. So from 0 to 40, 40 to 80, 80 to C0, and C0 to the end of the range. So I'm basically specifying in advance that the source shard is still going to be that 0 one, but I'm actually going to be creating four target shards, and these are going to be their, their labels and corresponding to what they're going to get mapped to when the sharding actually begins. So what I need to do is execute 301. And then after 301, I'm gonna go over to my shards and execute a few things over here. So for each of these, I've already prepared the shards themselves. And let me show you one of the key things that I added here is this shard script. And I'll make it a little bit bigger in this window just for now. So basically this is a script that's similar, but a little bit more advanced than the one that I did for setting up a tablet last time, where this one starts up uh, my SQL and it also starts up a VT tablet, but it also allows me to specify in addition to the UID, what is the shard that this corresponds to, which I'll specify on the command line. So bringing this back down here, what I would do is something like the following. I'd say bash shard, and I would specify this one's ID. Actually, I'm going to start from this one up here. So bash shard, the ID for this one's going to be 300. And the shard for this one is minus 40. 
or in other words, zero to 40. So this shard is gonna start up, shard, and then this is gonna be, what is that? 400 and 40 to 80. Bash, shard, this one is gonna be 500 and this one's gonna be 80 to C0. Oh, that's actually the other one. Oh well, bash, shard, this one's gonna be 600 and this one's going to be C0 to the end of the range. Okay, so these four shards are gonna get started up here. And all of them except for this one are started. So let's just wait on this one to finish. Okay, great. <clears throat> so we've got those four shards started up. Now, I need to run the 303 reshard so that it does the reshard. And actually, before I do this, I'm gonna insert some data into uh, these tables. So I'm gonna actually execute, recall that I had this right uh, traffic command. And this is one that, uh, let's see, oh yeah, I can't do this because I'm on the wrong server. I need to go over to one of the ones with a VT gate and run this. And it doesn't have write traffic. Okay, so let me cat out write traffic. Basically, I wanna do this because I don't have any data in the database right now. So let's put some in there. So it can't connect to the MySQL server right here, oh, 15.306, okay, there we go. So now it's gonna be populating uh, the database with some data, and I'll do that before I execute the sharding command, right? So I want there to be data in there before I shard, because I want it to actually have to do the work of spreading some data out across multiple nodes. So we'll wait for this to finish, and then come back uh, when it's ready. Great, the population finished there. So now it is time to actually go and start with the sharding. So I'm gonna run 303 and let this execute. There we go. So it started the process. And again, I'm just gonna go right into the 304 script and then 305. And then I might as well, while I'm here, run 306, which should clean up the other three instances that the customer key space used to live on, which would actually have all been on this same server right here. So I might as well tear those down and then we'll go and start testing this out with some workload after we go look at the admin panel and make sure it looks correct. So let's actually go over to the admin panel right now. Here we are in the admin panel and you can see it should be pretty much correct. So I have one tablet for each one of those four shards that I created. And then these are the three original ones that are all on the same EC2 instance and uncharted currently. So what I wanna be able to see, and, and since these are all primaries, I wanna be able to see some query workloads. That's just a tiny little bit there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to run some workload from the servers that have the VT gates on them, right? In reality, you'd be getting connections you know, from an app server or something like that, and that's where you'd be getting your workload from. So for the sake of simplicity, and since I already have so many instances spun up, I'm just gonna run some workload on each of these. So what I'm gonna do is pull up, uh, I'm gonna run the Python script. So I've already added that load.py script from before that I had showed you. And I'm gonna make 150 connections per each of these nodes. And I'm gonna throw a bunch of workload at the database. So I'm gonna run this same thing on each one of these. So run that run that, run that, and run that. So we'll let this warm up a little bit and let it get going. But what we should see is that we're actually handling a pretty high volume of queries per second spread across my four shards that I have in this setup. So let's go see if that's happening. To inspect this, what I can do is basically just click on each node, right? So if I look at this primary, the queries per second graph, again, it's just gotten started a little bit ago, but you can see that it's averaging about 15K queries per second. And again, keep in mind that this is on a C5X large, which is you know a pretty big instance, but not a huge instance. It's four CPU cores, only eight gigs of RAM. And so it's processing a decent amount here. There's probably some stuff we could do to further optimize it, right? But each one of these instances, so this is the uh, another one of the shards, this is also doing 15K. This one is doing 15K, maybe a little bit less. And tablet, this one is also doing about 15K. And then on top of that, I should actually still see that this primary here 
Oh, let's see, so this one's not getting any load. Oh, and this is because I'm only sending queries, not sending queries to the product table, and this one has the product stuff in it. So combined together, that's about 60,000 queries per second that I'm getting out of these four shards. And again, these aren't super impressively sized shards, right? Like these are very modest EC2 instances. And the cool thing about this is if you were following along with this experiment, and if you wanted to try and see if you could push the boundaries farther to 100K QPS or 500K QPS or a million QPS, you could basically take the same set of steps that I showed you and just expand them out, right? Make more shards, make more uh, VT gates, run more load on it, and you could kind of experiment and see how far you can get. And you could also experiment with just sizing up your nodes, right? You could try 2x larges or 4x larges. You could encounter limitations there with the network, right? Where maybe like the network bandwidth can't actually fully saturate the compute that you have on those nodes. Because the queries we're executing here are super simple, right? Not a very realistic workload. But anyway, we are successfully sharded across multiple EC2 instances with Vitesse. And you can use this nice interface here to monitor and see what's going on and see how many queries each of these shards are processing. So I hope that you found this example useful. It took a lot to put this together. It might look simple in the final product video, but getting all of these components to work together just right, to modify those scripts in just the right way, can be kind of a chore. Uh, but if you do it, you get a nice reward of a really powerful and very scalable database system. So don't forget to check out PlanetScale if you want an easier way to get all this set up. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you about doing this on Kubernetes, which should be a little simpler because we're just going to use Minikube for this. And then in the last video, we'll summarize and I'll talk some about what we at PlanetScale do and build on top of Vitesse. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Have a good one.